Welcome. I am animal communicator and best-selling author, Dr. Kara Gubbins, and this is the second video in a series of animal chakra videos that I am sharing with you. And in this video, we are going to be exploring chakra number one, also known as the root chakra, and um, talking about its function, how it works, what what's going on with it in all different kinds of animals. So let's get into it. Before we start, I just want to explain, in case you're new to animal chakras, chakras are energetic centers that govern every aspect of our lives and our animals' lives. And they're each associated with a particular location on the body, a particular color, and an overall theme in addition to all of their functions in our lives, which is what we're going to get into in this video. So animal chakras function on five levels. The physical, the mental, the emotional, the spiritual, and the energetic. So all of these aspects of an animal's lives are tied together and they're organized with, into the seven major chakras that are associated with the physical body. So there's a lot of organization and as you'll see as we go through the chakra, the themes go through um, on every level. It's kind of the same theme. So that's why I want to start talking about chakra number one with, um, with the first theme. So let's go there. So the first chakra is located at the base of the spine um, and it's actually at the perineum which is the piece of flesh between the anus and the genitals and its color is red and the theme for this chakra for chakra number one is safety and survival and stability. So if there's anything around any of those issues going on in your life or your animal's life, then you know that you have um, some kind of imbalance in the first chakra. The first chakra physically is located at the back part of the body. So physically it governs the functioning of the hind legs, the hips, the tail, the base of the spine, and also the elimination functions of the body. So this is the chakra that is governing getting waste out of the body. The first chakra is also in charge of the functioning of the blood, the lymph, the skin, and the immune system. So again, if there's anything going on with any of these parts of the physical body, you can also look to the first chakra for understanding and insight into that. And physically, the first chakra is really about making sure that survival needs are being met. So getting enough food, getting enough water, um, having a safe shelter and also feeling physically safe, being physically safe. So physical safety is um, a huge aspect of the first chakra. So those are the physical functions of the chakra. And next, let's talk about the mental aspect of the first chakra. So the mental or um, thinking part of the first chakra is belonging. I belong. I am safe. So having that belief system, having that awareness, having that thought process is part of the first chakra. Emotionally, the first chakra governs feeling safe and comfortable. So that feeling um, emotionally, of feeling emotionally safe, emotionally feeling like you're comfortable in your surroundings, in your location, in your physical environment. And the other emotions that can come up associated with the first chakra are fear and worry and doubt. So again, because we're looking at the theme of safety and security, the emotions of the first chakra are going to be about that. Do I feel safe? 
Um, you know, is there anything that I need to be worried about? Anything that I need to take care of? So those are some of the emotions associated with the first chakra. Spiritually, the first chakra is about having that sense of belonging to a tribe. And also because it's associated with your physical survival and um, your life force, there's also spiritually a sense of vitality, of having the energy to be alive, of, of being safe and thriving, you know, having that survival taken care of so that we can really thrive and live life fully. And for many animals, that sense of belonging to a tribe is a really important aspect of their, their physical safety and survival. And even in some species where you don't rely on other species members for your physical survival, there is still spiritually a sense of belonging to that tribe or that group or that lineage of that species. So spiritually, the, the um, functioning of chakra one can, you know, really transcend um, just the physical survival, but also into the species survival and, and the sense of um, being part of something bigger. And finally, the fifth level of functioning for the first chakra is the energetic level. And energetically, when our first chakra is balanced, we feel grounded and calm. So it's really important to recognize that the functions uh, on all five levels are interwoven. They are interdependent. They do all get connected by the energy of the chakra. And anything you do on one level can affect the other levels. So if you have if you're noticing any kind of imbalance, you can really approach it from that five, um, five dimensional approach of looking at what's the emotion that's going on, what's the physical um, situation, and all, all five of those levels um, are, are a great way to really holistically approach any kind of challenge. And the chakras kind of contain all of that information and understanding the chakras is like a shorthand for understanding the bigger picture of what's ever going on with the animals in your life. So this was just a little hint, a little introduction to chakra number one. But if you want more information about chakras, I've got a really exciting event coming up and that is the Animal Chakra Summit. And there will be experts from all over the world talking about animal chakras and different ways to understand and heal and balance and work with um, chakras and chakra health holistically for the ultimate well-being of the entire being of the animal. So I hope you'll join me and more information will be coming about the Animal Chakra Summit you are too impatient to wait for that Animal Chakra Summit and you want more information about chakras, come on over to caragubbins.com and I've got Animal Chakra classes and of course I have the summit coming up and so on my website we will have information about both the classes and as soon as it's available information about the summit. I hope this gives you a little bit of a better understanding of the root chakra in animals and a holistic way to approach balancing and working with anything that's going on with the animals in your life. I'm wishing you all the best. Thanks for joining me and I look forward to seeing you in the next chakra video in the animal chakra series. Have a great day.